Hello, today we look at the causes of hyponatremia. And hyponatremia is a low amount of sodium. And one of the causes is hyperglycemia, that means a high amount of glucose. So we can write it like this, a low amount of sodium caused by a high amount of glucose. When do we have a high amount of glucose? For example, when we have more than 126 milligram per deciliter, then we call it diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus. This value is important here. So this, it, sh it should be less than 126 milligram per deciliter in your blood. Or we can, we, can, we can also measure with another unit, millimole per liter, millimole per liter. Th that is when we have less than approximately 5.5, 6 millimole per liter. But I will, I will use milligram per deciliter here. And when we have less amount of sodium, less than 135, then we call it hyponatremia. So this is how we write it. Hypo stands for something low. Hypo, natremia is natrium, so sodium in the blood. Emia is blood. That one is called hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia. And that is when we have hyper, high amount of something. Glyc is the glucose and emia is the blood. So hyponatremia caused by hyperglycemia. And hyperglycemia, as we said, is more than 126 milligram per deciliter. And then we call it diabetes mellitus. So this is your artery here. And we have cells. And when the sodium level, here, here we have sodium. When the sodium level in the blood is low, then we call it hyponatremia. And now we have a lot of glucose. L let's say these are glucose. These are sugar molecules. And we have increased amount of them that will cause that we have a higher tonicity in this blood vessel. So we have an increased amount of tonicity. And that just means that the tone in the blood is higher, which means that it will, the water from the cell will go into the blood, bloodstream instead. Because, as we know, the water tends to move toward the higher concentration. So it, if we have only a couple of molecules here in the cell, and we have a lot of molecules here in the bloodstream, then the water tends to move there to make a balance, to make a concentration balance. So the concentration here in the cell and in the vascular system is the same. And therefore, when the concentration of these solutes and glucose are so high in this blood vessel, then we call it, high, then we call it that we have high tonicity here. Then the blood, then the water will uh, go from the cell into the bloodstream to compensate that the concentration will not be so high. The number of molecules will still be the same here, but the water balance will be more here also, and so the concentration will be less. And the importance now is for us that we have a diabetic patient that comes in and uh, I measure the sodium level and I see that it's less than 135. Let's say I, I measure a sodium level of 133 instead of 135. Then I know that this guy has a sodium level of, of two sodium less than it should. Okay. Then I measure the glucose level. And I see that the glucose is more than 126 in his blood. Then I know that I can correct this sodium because, because 2 millimole of sodium, so a decrease of 2 millimole of sodium is when we have an increase of more than 100 milligram per deciliter glucose. So when you have an increase of glucose of 100, then we have a decrease of sodium of 2. That means that this guy have a glucose of more than 126, so it's more than 100, then we can 
then we can say that this guy has not 133 sodium. In fact, he has 135 because we, we got the decrease of two sodiums just because we had a, high, uh, a higher glucose than 100. And why is this so? Because when we have a lot of glucose, these are glucose molecules, then these will attract water. And if we attract water from the cells, then the concentration of this sodium one will be lower. Why? Because we have more water. So if we have a bottle of, of water here and we have, let's say, three sodium molecules, and now we start to increase the water from the cell into the vascular system, then we have a bottle of water with more water, we still have three sodiums, so the concentration of the sodium is now lower. So the sodium concentration decreased just because the water moved in, and the water moved into the vascular system just because of the glucose. And now the formula is, for every 100 milligram glucose increase, we have a 2 millimole per liter sodium decrease. So if the, this guy has 200, 200 glucose, then we have a decrease of sodium of 4 millimole. That means that instead of 135, which should be no normal, he has maybe 131 by 200 milligram of glucose. But if the guy has 400 glucose in his blood, then we have, then we have for every 100, we have less than 2 sodium, so we have 4 times 2 is minus 8. So we have 8 sodium decrease for 400 increase of glucose. So if this patient comes in and I measure the blood and, and I see that the glucose is 400, then immediately when I see the sodium level, I can say that I need to correct it with 8. So let's say the 135 is the normal and he has uh, then 127, 127. This is still normal. Why? Because I need to correct it. So 127 sodium is normal because we are in the we are still above 135 because we corrected it with eight since he had a lot of glucose in his blood. But of course, if this patient has 120 of sodium, 120 of sodium, then I know that with the correction he would get 128, and that's still, that's still below 135, which means that he lost seven sodium from another cause, not, not because of the glucose, he lost it from another cause. But I know that he lost eight just because of the glucose. So get the point. So, so then I know that this patient has hyponatremia, not because of glucose only, because, and then I need to search for another disease that is causing this hyponatremia. But if I see that this correction will bring the sodium level to the 135, then I know that this is just because of a high glucose amount. Okay? And now, what happens when we have above 400? 400 is the golden rule that uh, until 400 you have a decrease of 2 sodium for every 100 milligram of glucose. Glucose. But above 400, then you have a decrease of 4 sodium, so double for every 100. And now let's make a, let's make a chart then to see what, what this really looks like. So I write the sodium here, so minus 2, minus 2 sodium, I write sodium here, minus 2 sodium at 100 milligram, minus 4 at 200, minus 6 at 300, minus 8 at 400, and here is where the jump comes. Instead of writing minus 10 at 500, I will write minus 12 at 500, 
Why? Because here, uh, in this in this part, in this part, we had a negative two sodium for every hundred hundred glucose. But here, from here on, we have a negative four sodium for every hundred glucose. So 500. What's about when we have 600 glucose? Then we have minus 16. So you see, there's a big jump here. Every, uh, minus, two, minus 4 for every 100 jump. And then I know that I get a patient now. He has, he has a sodium of not 135, but he has a sodium of, let's say, 120. 123 and then I then I look at this and I and I see that wow this is really low sodium then I look at the glucose and I see that the glucose is in this region 500 500 glucose then I know that he well, I need to correct it with minus 12 so in, in fact he doesn't have 123 he actually has 135 12 plus 123 is 135 so this is normal sodium so so we need to treat the glucose we need to treat the diabetes and not the sodium don't give sodium to this patient it's useless because we we, we can correct the glucose and then the sodium will follow and uh, and if i see that uh, the glucose is normal in a patient who has 123 of course then it's a hyponatremia because of another course and then I need to continue and look for the other courses so that's it basically so I want you to remember that hyponatremia can be caused by simply a high amount of sugar and usually this is because of diabetes mellitus and many patients have diabetes mellitus so it's very important that you look at the glucose level when you see that the patient has hyponatremia so don't forget this thank you very much